Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the Viterra Charts micro chart. Now, the micro chart visual that we're going to be looking at today is a really interesting way uh, visual because it provides a really nice intuitive way to look at multiple metrics on a single compact layout. So it's a nice grid layout that it's going to provide to you. And you can have multiple metrics shown in a bullet chart, in a column chart, in a line chart, all within the same visual. Each metric is kind of laid out to be presented as different visuals. And so, like I said, you can have a bullet chart and a line chart and a column chart all right next to each other, as well as any kind of aggregates that you want to see. So you use it in the best way that's going to conserve, convey main meaning to you. All right, so this one is uh, designed by Viterra. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to use the Viterra Charts micro chart in our example today. All right, so we're going to start in this example by pulling in our data source that we're going to use. And for that, we're going to go up to the Get Data section, and we'll select Excel. And using this data set, we're going to go find our Power BI custom visual data sets that we've been using. And the one we're going to use today is here, one called Regional Sales Goals. So I'm going to select Regional Sales Goals and bring that into the Power BI desktop. There's a spreadsheet in here that has actuals, goals. And then because we're going to be creating a bullet chart, we want to be able to create kind of a banded effect in that bullet chart. So I have ranges of where the band should begin. This first band would be my band that would probably be red. This one would work its way through yellow. And then band three would be anything that's beating our goal that's more on the, the green side. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hit load to bring this now into, actually, let's hit, hit edit, I mean. We're going to click edit to take this into the Power Query Editor. And the reason I want to do that is because there are a few things that Power BI will automatically attempt to fix for me. One of those things that it's going to automatically attempt to fix for me is you see that the month has actually been automatically converted to a date, when that's not really what I wanted it to do. If you take a step back here, you can see this is what my values actually look like. They're a month number and month name combined together. But the way that Power BI interpreted that is it actually automatically converted those to dates, and that's not really what I wanted it to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and convert and change the data type of my month column to switch it back over to a text column. And as I do that, it's going to ask me, do I want to replace the step we already had and get rid of that converting conversion to a date? And yes, I do. So I'm going to go ahead and select replace current. There we go. And that'll bring back the values that I have. If I wanted to, I could also come in here and make these more formal kind of currency values if I wanted to. So I could select these values here and I could come up to the data type on the top and I could make these more of a fixed decimal place if I wanted to. They are dollar amount, so it's, it's fine to do that. I'm going to go ahead and make that change. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to bring this into the Power BI visualization plane by going ahead and hit Close and Apply. Now, when I hit Close and Apply, you'll see that new table appear over here in the field list. And then we can start to work with this a little bit better. All right, so for this example, again, we're going to be using the Viterra Charts micro chart. So our first step, of course, is to go ahead and import that chart in. So I'm going to go to the marketplace. And from the marketplace, I'm going to search micro chart. There we go. So I find the Viterra Charts micro chart here. I can go ahead and add this one, make it add part to part of our visualization pane, and I'll go ahead and bring that into our design surface. And now I'm going to actually make this take up the entirety of the screen, so I'll make this be quite a bit larger here. And then let's walk our way through how to use this one, because it is kind of unique in how you configure it. So I want to walk you through that. One of the things that's kind of unique about it is if you want to use a field more than once, you can't actually just drag a field in a second time. You need to create a measure for it. So I'll, I'll show you what that looks like here in just a moment. To begin with, though, we're going to go ahead and bring in our, our category axis. So you'll make sure you select the chart. And then you'll see that it requires a category axis, which in this case is going to be the region for us. So I'm going to drag and drop region into the category axis. And then I'm also going to bring the trend by. It's going to be that we want to trend by the month. So I'll drag and drop month in here. Then I'll go ahead and bring in to the goals section, I'm sorry, to the uh, value section. I'm going to start by bringing in total sales. I'll also go ahead and bring in the goal. And I'll bring in band one, two, and three. Okay, so I've brought in several fields here. What I want to do with those fields, however, is a little bit different. What I'd want to do, the way that this chart is going to work for me, is I'm actually going to hide some of these values here. I'm going to hide some of these to be used at a later point. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide both the goal, the band one, and band two. So you'll see the way this works on this chart is you're going to click the little three lines that you see next to the column headers. And as you do that, you have special properties for each of these values that you have. And in this case, we're just going to hide these values for the goal, band one, two, and three. Now, I'm also going to go ahead and bring 
and a, a new metric, a new measure that we want to analyze. And you'll see uh, one of the things that you can do, by the way, if you actually hide a column that you didn't mean to, say, for example, I wanted to return goal back, and I kind of actually do. So I'm going to go ahead and go back over here and right click on the column header section. You'll see where you can select show slash high columns. All the columns that are either shown or hidden are seen here. And if I want to bring back the goal, I can go ahead and select goal and bring it back into the, the fold here. And if I wanted to, I could even do something like maybe instead of seeing this as a line chart, I want to see it as just an aggregate number. You can hit that, those lines next to the column header again, and I can tell it that I want to value, I want to aggregate this value and maybe show me the, the top or the max of my goals that I have for each of these. And if I wanted to, you can then drill into each of these regions and see the goals at an individual level, and then I can see it kind of aggregated up as well. Okay, so that's nice. That works out pretty well. What I'd like to do next, though, is I want to actually take this to the next level. What I'd like to do is I want to be able to bring out some, something like a bullet chart. But to do that and, and, and actually analyze a bullet chart, what I would want to have is the total sales again. But you'll notice if you bring total sales in a second time, so if I drop total sales in here again, you can do it, but you don't necessarily have it as another option where you can show it again. It still only shows total sales here once as far as the columns that are made available to you. So a little trick that you have to do here to make this work is you're actually going to have to create a new measure. To create a new measure, you can right click on the table that you're working with over here in the field list, and you can select that you want to create a new measure. And this is going to be a very simple measure. All I'm going to do with this measure is sum the total sales column we already have. So I'm going to call this my actual. And then the definition of this one is going to be that we're going to sum the total sales. And that's it. So I have a new column that I've just created called actual. And that, that, that column is defined by the sum of total sales, which I already have in the chart. But we're going to add it in a second time because I want to create a bullet chart out of it. I like the line chart. I'm going to keep the line chart. But I also want to be able to bring in a bullet chart. And so I need that total sales in here a second time. And we're going to bring it in this time using the actual column that we just created. Now, if I want to switch this to another type of visual, rather than seeing it as just a line chart, you can do that by, again, hitting the little lines that you see next to the actual column header. And you can see underneath the trend line, our trend line charts that you have the ability to make this into a bar chart if you wanted to, kind of like so. You have the ability to make this into a line chart, which we already have. That should kind of mimic what we see over there. And then you can also use and create a bullet chart. So if I select bullet chart, you'll see it's going to convert this into a bullet chart here. And you can make these as larger or smaller as you want. In fact, you can actually right click here and tell it that you want to do auto sizing here. And you can tell it to fit to the entire grid or just fit to the content you have. If I hit fit to the entire grid, it's going to expand these all the way out to the far right. Let me show you what that looks like. So kind of a nice way to be able to scale it out. And if you wanted to, you could actually resize this by grabbing the corner and making it smaller. And as you make it smaller, it's going to resize the chart with you. Okay. All right. So if I want to configure how this bullet chart is being seen, you know, it's kind of showing some values in here already, but it's not necessarily showing what I want it to. It's actually kind of made up some ranges here. So if I want to adjust this, the way I can do that is you can, of course, go back over to the column header and click this little three lines that you see here in the top right of the column header once more. Go to Trend Line Charts, and then select More Options. And then when you select More Options, you're going to have quite a few things that you can actually configure here. So you can configure that, oh, I want the target to be based off of the column I have called Goal. And I want Band 1 to be based off a column I have called Band 1. And so on and so forth, where Band 1, 2, and 3 are associated with the bands that they're going to be creating. And if you wanted to, you can kind of switch around the aggregations that you have in here. If you want to see this in any different way, say, for example, I want to analyze this as a max or any other way, you can kind of adjust the way that those are formatted in here and the way that they're aggregated. You may also want to change the colors. So say, for example, I want to see this as a dark blue is fine, but maybe I want to see something like a target. Well, the target as black is fine, but I want the bands to be a different color. I want band one to be maybe more of a red. And I want band two, let's select that correctly. I want band two to maybe be more of a yellow. Okay, let's try and find a more accurate yellow there. And then maybe I want to see band three as a green, meaning we met our goal kind of, kind of thing here. All right, so I've selected and I've created a few things here. You can actually resize this so you can see this a little better if you wanted to. Okay, and then I need to go back to it. It looks like I lost the settings there. I'll have to do that one more time. But I can go back in here, go to the more options once more. That's my mistake for trying to adjust the, the size of it while in the middle of editing it. But we'll fix it real quickly here. All right, so I can, again, you can change the, the aggregations. Then I can go and change the color. So we said we had it as a red, yellow, and green. 
So we'll select those values again for the colors. And then once we have that, we'll go ahead and hit OK or apply to this. And you should immediately see the changes show behind the scenes here. When you hit apply, you'll see those value changes show on the right hand side behind in the, the chart. And you can close this out to go back and look at what the chart looks like and get a good view of what it is expected to see. All right. So that's a good way to kind of play around with it. Now you saw how you can actually do auto adjusting of the size of the chart. Auto adjusting is going to be based on the size of the content or based on the size of the grid. So again, if you right click here, you can tell it that you want to auto size fit to content, which will make it smaller and based off the size of the, the column content that you have. And as you expand, it'll actually expand with you. Or you can tell it that I always want it to be the size of the grid that I have. So I can right click, tell it that I want to do auto sizing to the grid width and that'll make it extend all the way out. I kind of like that method for at least this example. So let's go ahead and leave it as that. You can also then tell it that you want to change the grid theme. So you'll notice here if I right click that you can uh, change and reset the column sorting thresholds filters. But there's also here the grid theme that you can adjust and the grid theme is set to fresh by default. But you can also change it to any of the other ones that you have here. You can make it more of a dark theme if you'd like. You can make it uh, I think I like kind of the blue one a little bit better. So I can select the blue one, which is kind of a nice one. Or you can actually go underneath the grid theme section here and do edit theme and you can make your own. So you'll find inside here, you can actually come in and change the row height. So how, row, how tall each row is allowed to be. So maybe you want to bump that up a little bit. You can certainly do that. You can see that here. Maybe you want to adjust something like the font family that's being used. So when maybe you want it to be bold. There, I just adjusted it to bold. You can see that appear here now. And so you have some flexibility to come in and actually make some adjustments here and even change things like the font alignment. Do we left align, right align, that's changing the column headers there as I do that. So quite a few nice things that you can do with inside of the visual. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. That's going to allow me to change the grid theme. You should note here you can also go and adjust some of the other settings from here as well. If you wanted to show or hide other fields, you can bring those in using this feature. You can also determine whether or not you see totals. So right now you'll see that we're seeing a grand total for the goal, which is fine. Maybe I do want to see that. But optionally, you can actually right click on the, the header section here again. And then if you want, you can actually hide that subtotal or that total so that it's not showing here anymore. And then as you expand, you can still see the totals at each individual region level. But uh, this is kind of how that chart works. Now, it's a, a nice little chart. I like it. There's, it's a, a unique way of configuring. I will point out to you that there's not really anything that you can do underneath the format section. You'll see there's an internal use grid state section here. Not really something that you should be messing around with, it looks like. But you can, of course, adjust and change things like the, t the title and the background and all those things that appear in every one of the visuals. Those are certainly available here as well. So that's really it for this chart here, the micro chart, Viterra charts. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh, look forward to showing you our next custom visual and our next module. Thanks a lot. Thank you.